Hello, my name is Dr. Roderick L. Roll, and today I will be talking to you about symbiotic relationships. Symbiosis means to live together. Researchers have analyzed the human body and they discovered that 10 trillion human cells exist in every individual. Within that same individual, 100 trillion bacteria, fungus, and viruses exist. We would discuss three types of existence of symbiotic relationships. The first one is mutualism. In a mutualistic relationship, both members will benefit from their interaction. In this image, we have a sea anemone and a clownfish. They are both benefiting from this interaction. Another example of mutualism is the bacteria that live in your colon. They will receive a warm, moist, nutrient-rich environment while the individual receives vitamin precursors and other nutrients released from that bacteria. Another example of a mutualistic relationship is in termites, in the guts of termites. This protozoa, Trichotnympha, is the organism that lives in the gut of the termite with, which actually digests the cellulose that is in wood. So everyone knows that termites eat wood. But what actually digests the cellulose that makes up the wood is a mutualistic relationship between this uh, trichonympha and the actual termite. The second type of symbiosis is commensalism. Commensalism is when one mem member benefits without significantly affecting the other. In this image, we see these barnacles that are living on the surface of this well. So the well is not harmed, it's just uncomfortable. So one member is benefiting the barnacle while the other one isn't significantly harmed. Another example of commensalism is the skin bacteria named Staphylococcus aureus. This pathogenic microbe can colonize the skin and actually benefit without significantly harming you. This Staphylococcus is a round shaped bacteria. The third type of symbiosis is parasitism. Parasitism is when a parasite or an organism is going to benefit while harming another. The human body has a xanic site and infested sites. The exanic site means that it is free of all microbes. In this slide, in this image, we have a hospital room that has no microbes. It is a azanic site. Normal microbiota in the infested area will contain residential microbes and transient microbes. The resident microbiota are, will be the microbes that will stay with you throughout life whereas the transient microbiota 
are going to be the ones that will visit you for hours to days to even months and then they will disappear in the womb you were surrounded by an amniotic membrane which contained sterile fluid you were immediately exposed to microbes once the amniotic membrane ruptured during birth during the first meal you colonize your colon through your mouth during your first breath you infected the upper respiratory tract through your nose medical staff and your parents infected your skin with microbes such as staphylococcus <laughs>